Good evening. My name is Peter Singh. I'm from Sacramento. Sometimes the truth requires standing the facts you think you know on their head. For instance, Giovanni Palatucci, a fascist police officer from World War II era Italy, who was once credited as the Italian Schindler, is now being repudiated by, Italian, by Italians as an abuser of the Jews. The Anti-Defamation League and the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum have both reversed their praise of Palatucci. It's not too late to change your mind. Propaganda has been exposed before. Why did you approve a statue of Gandhi? The city of Cerritos notes that the Cerritos Gandhi statue is located on private property. It is. But this whole affair began because the city of Cerritos, according to official correspondence from Mayor Bruce Barrows, required the property owner to provide a statue or monetary contribution as a part of the Art in Public Places program when their development was approved. Do you only respect private property rights when asked to take responsibility for controversy? Where was the respect for private property rights when demanding a statue or monetary contribution before the property owner could develop? Where was the discernment? Gandhi was a Hindu religious preacher who said, caste is necessary for Christians and Muslims as it has been necessary for Hinduism and has been its saving grace. Gandhi was an advocate of racial segregation of blacks in pre-apartheid South Africa. Gandhi was also a man who, late into his 70s, forced his 18-year-old grandniece Manu and his 17-year-old grandniece Abba to sleep naked with him on a nightly basis to test his commitment to celibacy. In one of the world's premier examples of twisted logic, Gandhi asked, If I don't let Manu sleep with me, though I regard it as essential that she should, wouldn't that be a sign of weakness in me? Today, Gandhi would be tossed in prison if caught doing such a thing in Cerritos. Perhaps most compelling is that Gandhi never once visited the USA. He has no ties to this country whatsoever. Have you heard of Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar? Tonight, I know you have. He was a so-called untouchable from India, the lowest of the low in the Hindu caste system, which has poisonously divided that subcontinent society for centuries. He arrived in America in 1913, 100 years ago this year, to study at Columbia University. While in the U.S., Dr. Ambedkar was molded by American freedom movements. He saw blacks enduring the same mental and physical tortures which are still, to this day, inflicted upon untouchables for no reason but the circumstance of their birth. Upon his return to India, Dr. Ambedkar immediately launched a movement to uplift the untouchables. One of his first movements was uh, to demand recognition of the equal rights of all to drink from water in public places. Have you heard of Kartar Singh Saraba? He was a young South Asian who landed in the port of San Francisco in 1912, 100 years ago last year. He immediately settled into life in California and enrolled at UC Berkeley to study chemistry. However, knowledge of the situation in his country of origin disturbed him. The British were brutally occupying India, and Saraba said, Indians are citizens of a slave country. Inspired by the American tradition of freedom of the press, Saraba founded the first Punjabi language newspaper in the United States, called Gutter. In fact, this talented young man published in six languages total. The printing press, which he personally operated, is preserved in Stockton, California. Once again, inspired by stories of our nation's revolutionary founders who treasured the principles of liberty and self-government, Saraba decided to return to India in 1914 to launch India's independence movement. At the age of 19, this young Californian, who I reiterate, launched India's independence movement, was hung by the neck until dead by the British because he loved America's traditions of freedom. So, these are men worth honoring. These are people that are actually connected to America. Most importantly, these are people who never campaigned for racial segregation. These are people who never praised Hitler. And these are people who did not sexually exploit their young female relatives. A little discernment may have been helpful in considering which South Asian should be honored with a statue in Cerritos. Mayor Barrows also wrote, the Fine Arts and Historical Commission 
and the city council received and approved the statue. Well, Mr. Mayor, what prevents you from changing your mind? Thank you for your time.